I want to talk about graphing quadratic functions. I'm going to go rather quickly because this is just a review of things we've talked about in class. Um, remember there are basically two forms, formats, that you'll see a quadratic function. One is called graphing or vertex form and it would look like this, y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k, where h k is the vertex, um, which is why we call it vertex form, because it's easy to see the vertex. You also might see it in standard or general form where you have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It's not obvious what the vertex is. To find it, we have this formula. To find the x-coordinate, which is h, you're going to do the opposite of b over 2a. When you get that answer, you substitute it back into the function for x and solve for k, which is the y-coordinate of the vertex. The method I'm going to use is going to refer back to the parent graph, which is just y equals x squared which in class we talked about making a table of values. From your vertex, if you plot your vertex, you go over 1, up 1, because when you square a 1, you get 1. Over 2, up 4, because when you square a 2, when you, you get 4. Over 3, up 9, because when you square a 3, you get 9. So to, to graph this, and we have some additional things we're going to be looking at, um, the first thing you have to do is pick out the vertex. Now, this is in, when you have the parentheses there, you know this is in graphing or vertex form, and there's no k values. So this is like having plus zero. So the first thing you're going to do is locate your vertex. It is six, zero, so you would plot that. Then you're going to look here. And the value of a tells you, is it, is it stretched or compressed? Does it open up or open down? This is going to open up, and it's vertically stretched which means we're going to, um, because it's vertically stretched by two, we're going to double the up part. So we would have gone over one, up one. We have to double the up. Over two would have been up four. Now it's going to be up eight. And we graph it. And that wasn't a very good graph, but you can kind of see. We've identified the vertex. The axis of symmetry is the line that splits it in half. And so um, I'm going to put AOS, and that is going to be a vertical line, so it's x equals 6, the domain, all real numbers, and the range is going to depend upon the y value of the vertex, and it opens up, so y is greater than or equal to 0. Next problem, now this one is actually in both in graphing form and in standard form. Notice there is no linear term with just an x, so the vertex... This is just the parent graph moved up to. The vertex is 0, 2. Um, the h part, you can think of this as x minus h or x minus 0 quantity squared plus 2. Um, so we would plot the vertex. Um, this is having a 1 here, so it's not stretched or compressed, so it's just like the parent graph. And it's positive, so you go up. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. And you graph it, make sure it's U-shaped. My um, axis is symmetry, a vertical line, so it's x equals 0, because it's the y-axis. My domain is all real numbers, and the range, notice the minimum value is 2, so it's y is greater than or equal to 2. Notice it's the k-value. On this one, my vertex, so the h value, because it's hk, remember it was a minus h, so it's the opposite of this number here, so it's going to be a negative 2, 2. So I plot the vertex. Now this time my a value is a half, it's positive, so it opens up, but it's vertically compressed. Which means we're going to chop the up in half. So it would have been over 1, up 1, but instead we only go up half the amount. Over 2 would have been up 4. Half of 4 is 2, so it only goes up 2. I'm going to do one more. Over 3 would have been up 9. Half of 9 is 4 and a half. So we end up with this, and we draw that in. Notice that we get a little wider U-shaped graph. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. It's the x-coordinate of the vertex. The domain, all real numbers, and the range. Notice we have a minimum of 2, so y is greater than or equal to 2. Again, be aware that that is the k value of the vertex. 
And this next one, the vertex, we can just tell right away is negative three, negative two when we look here. So I'm gonna plot the vertex. Now this one opens down because my A value is negative and it's vertically stretched by two. So we are going to um, double what would have been the up, except we're gonna go down instead. So it would have been over one, up one. We're gonna go over one, down two, because we doubled that amount. Over two would have been up four. We're going to be going down eight. And I'm just gonna make sure I approximate it well. And then we would draw this in. My axis of symmetry is the x coordinate of the vertex, my domain, all real numbers, my range. Again, the, we have a maximum value of negative two, so we're gonna have y is less than or equal to negative two. Remember the maximum or minimum value of the function is always the y coordinate of the highest or lowest point, and it's always gonna be related to this value of k. Okay, so going on here, um, this time notice that we don't know the vertex. This is in um, our standard or general form. Whoops. So to find the value of the h value or the x value of the, the x coordinate of the vertex, remember we're gonna do the opposite of b over 2a. So in this case, a is one, B is six, C is seven. So then we get the opposite of B, which is negative six over two times one. So I get a negative three. Then I'm going to plug that in. So I have negative nine minus, I'm sorry, I have a positive nine minus 18 plus seven. So negative nine plus seven is negative two. So my vertex, is negative three, negative two, and I'm going to plot that from my vertex. Now the value of a is one. That's the same a value that we deal with in graphing form. So my, my graph is not stretched or compressed and it opens up. So it's over one, up one, like the parent graph, over two, up four. If I wanted to do over three, up nine, I could. I'm not going to. I'm gonna draw my graph. And this time, um, and as long as I can see your points plotted, um, you could do over one, up one, if you were trying to describe over two, up four, if you wanted to describe it, how it, it relates to the parent graph. Okay, here again, it's in standard form, so we start by finding the vertex. Um, so the opposite of B would be negative 20 over two times A. So I get negative 20 over negative four, which is a positive five. Then I need to find out the y value of the vertex. So I get negative 50 here, um, plus 100 minus 51. So I get a 50 minus 51, which is negative one. So the vertex is five, negative one. And this is stretched, vertically stretched, and it opens down. So we're going to go over one. Instead of down one, we're gonna go down two. Over two, and instead of down four, we're gonna go down eight. And then we're gonna graph it. Um, next one, this is actually in um, graphing form as well when there's no linear term. So this is just the parent graph opening down and moved up one. Um, again, you can think of this as um, having a zero x, so the opposite of b over 2a would be zero. So my vertex is zero, one. So I would plot that point. It opens down, but it's not stretched. So over one, down one, over two, 
down 4. If you wanted to go over 3, down 9, you could. And then graph. And it, on all of these, we could find the domain and range. I didn't ask you to in the um, direction, so we did on the previous ones. And on this last one, to find the vertex, to find h, we do the opposite of b over 2a. 2 times a half is 1, so I get negative 2. Then I'm going to plug this value in. So if you square the negative 2, you get 4. Half of 4 is 2. Here we're going to have a minus 4 and a minus 1. So we have negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So the vertex is negative 2, negative 3. So I plot my vertex. From there, it opens up, and it's compressed, vertically compressed. And actually, it's important to talk about the fact that it's vertically stretched or compressed. Um, there's also such thing as horizontally compressed or horizontally stretched that we will talk about next year in college algebra. So from here, I'm going to go over 1, would have gone up 1, but I only go up half that amount. If I go over 2, would have gone up 4, but I only go up half that amount. If I went over 3, I would have gone up 9, but I go up half that amount, which is 4 and a half. You don't have to do that last one, but it gives you a better sketch. And that's it for graphing quadratic functions.